Oh, g'day champions. Welcome to the home workshop. It's Sunday Arvo, and I'm still working. We've got a maiden performer here, and uh, she's seen some action. <laughs> it's, it's worn through the soundboard there in several places. Uh, probably from some percussive stuff with long fingernails. And uh, the bridge has seen better days. It's almost like down to nothing at that end there, just from, from wear. It's been glued together two or three times, apparently. Uh, there's glue all over the face of it. And as you can see there, it is starting to depart. We'll have to remove that. Um, now, uh, I could re-glue it, but it's actually it's pretty worn down here, and there is a crack through it as well. I think we'll just replace it. However, the machining on this isn't very simple. It's not as simple as it looks from the top. So it is a bit of a dog to, to make a new one from scratch. So Maiton don't like me very much. So uh, I thought I'll get, <laughs> I'll get a replacement bridge through my mates. Uh, they ordered one in for me, but he fucking carbon copied me in the email. So he scrolled down and saw my logo and <laughs> he says, can you tell your luthier to stop talking shit about our bridges? Um, you know, fair play. Uh, I do talk shit about their bridges, but it's because they're kind of, well, it's not their bridge that's at fault. The bridge is fine. It's the pickup. So um, the pickup actually weakens the top quite a bit, but I'll show you that to you. And that's that's one of the big reasons why these things let go so readily and why the tops warp quite a bit. But, you know, it's very hard to express concerns about a brand these days without some kind of backlash, be it from owners and fans of the brand, uh representatives of the brand itself their spokespeople um ambassadors of the brand you know like um anyone that's got a financial interest in it i don't have a financial interest in, in any of it i'm just telling you how i see it and it's, it's pretty obvious i mean it's video evidence i've shown it many times and people still deny it's a problem but you get the same thing with amplifiers people don't want to believe what is literally in front of their face They've been indoctrinated into a sort of strange cult, um, whereas I don't give a fuck. I just want the bridges to stay on the guitar and I want the customer to be happy and I want the guitar to last them a very long time. Couldn't give a shit uh, about any of that political crap. I just want you to build guitars that fucking last. So, I don't know. You can get upset about it until the cows come home. Oh, the cows again. I mean, I, I want nothing more than to love Maiden. Um, a successful mass production operation building Australian-made guitars on shore with locally sourced timbers. Like, what, what's there not to love? Um, but there's just this Achilles heel that, you know, and there'll be people in the comments, I've had my guitar for 30 years, never had a problem. Yes, your sample size of one. Had one guy, he said he's owned 20 of them, never had a problem. Okay, great. Are you telling me that I'm not seeing what's in front of my face? Like, I'm providing you video evidence. Do you think I actually set these guitars up to fail and video them because I've got some vendetta against Maiton? Like, I haven't got time for that shit. I don't give a fuck either. So anyway... Maintenance, fantastic guitars, let down by their pickup design, and I'll show you why. But first, we'll go over the rest of the stuff that this guitar needs. This owner didn't want me to clean it up too much because it's got some character. Uh, apparently, he took it to another tech and they cleaned hell out of it once and he got the shits with them. <laughs> he was good enough to tell me that because um, when something's this, this aged, like... Uh, I usually at least ask the question. I say, look, do you want this thing to be cleaned up? Um... It's a matte finish, so it kind of it kind of ages a little bit more gracefully than like a gloss finish that might chip off or whatever with its thicker finish. So it's got a very thin, what I think is nitrocellulose, uh, or at least single pack lacquer finish. And uh, there's quite a bit of finger cheese on there. I've taken the battery out to inspect it. I'll show you that shortly too. But we'll leave all of that as is at the customer's request. And we'll just do the things that affect the playability and the uh, the action of this instrument. Now, it's had a stainless refret, and I've got to say, it's pretty well executed. I can't find any faults with it. We put the straight edge on it and the fret rocker, and it's all nice and good. So uh, it's great to see some good work out there for once. However, the nut does leave a little to be desired. Uh, its shape's not really in line with the neck. It doesn't blend gracefully into the headstock. It, the ends are really square and they could be rolled over a bit more. There's glue on the face of it. 
slots seem reasonably regularly uh, spaced, so that's a plus. There's glue on the face of the headstock as well. So we'll see if we can clean that up without doing any damage. But more importantly, the strings are really high at the first fret. I'm talking like two mil, so that would have been a real dog to play in the first couple of positions. And you would have had intonation problems because as you bend a string that far, you're introducing more tension into it and the pitch goes up. So you want to try and get that down to about, I, I aim for 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a mil, depending on how hard they play or if they use slide. But we might be able to reuse that blank and just, uh, just reshape it and refine it, reinstall it, polish it, make it look like a gem. Now another common problem with these things is the battery clips go corroded. They're just like a, a bare brass and the batteries leak a bit of moisture. They're also facing upwards like all preamps, but um, they catch any sweat or uh, you know spilt drinks or anything on the top. So they can corrode rather readily considering there's no plating on those battery contacts. And the other ones that are plated later, it's not very thick and it actually just flakes off and then corrodes away. And we've got the dreaded Duracells. Um, stay away from Duracells because for some reason they all leak uh, well within their expiry date. Um, so just, just stay away from them in general if you want your <laughs> electronics to survive. Just use them if you absolutely have to and then get rid of them afterwards as soon as you can. The action is pretty low on this thing. That's the uh, 12th fret there. You're probably talking under 2 mil. So at least we know the neck's on the right angle. That saddle's copped a lot of wear too, so uh, I'll replace that one. I might make one by hand just to fit perfectly to the new bridge. And I think a new set of bridge pins is in order as well. You leave them in there too long, they get brittle and they can snap off in there when you're trying to change a string. You don't want that while you're playing a gig. So I've had a look inside and all the bracing's intact, so that's a plus. Bridge plate's in good condition, not too worn around the string holes, that kind of thing. But you can see here the kind of dip that's happening in front of that bridge and the angle it's on. The main reason for that is the, the slot that's cut for the pickup in the top. And when I say top, I mean the actual soundboard. If you get a typical sort of fisherman or whatever pickup, uh, it's just got like a thin sliver that sits under the saddle. This has got, shut up waddle bird, this has got six individual crystal slugs, one for each string, and a stupid piece of channel that holds them all. And as a result, there's like a half inch wide slot routed into the uh, soundboard to accommodate it. As you can see on the new bridge here, it's got the holes for the slugs on the bottom as well as the two locating pins. And on the top, you've got the slot for the saddle and the two adjusting screws that hold the uh, the channel in place and the six slugs giving upward pressure. So it's got uh, contact with the... Don't you love the sounds of suburbia? Dogs barking, birds chirping. What was I saying? Yeah, bridge, things and stuff, whatever. So the first thing we'll do, we'll take the strings off, we'll take the pick up and saddle out, start heating that bridge with the uh, special little heating blanket, uh, which I can... Put a link in the thingy down below even though i don't get a cent for it and we'll gently remove that bridge and see if there's any damage underneath because this has been re-glued a few times so there might be some damage to the soundboard already um and it might be a little bit difficult to just re-glue the bridge without some soundboard repair first and the weird thing is even on the uh, models that don't have a pickup they still have the same cutouts and everything in this in the uh bridge and the the soundboard so I don't know if that's for future upgradability or if they've just got it for production reasons. They've just got the same routing happen happening to every soundboard just because I don't know which actual model it's going on. Didn't know, champions. It's all just speculation. Sound a little bit boxy and not real full in the bottom end. The strings are pretty dead too. But uh, yeah, I think it's starting to lose a little bit of snap because of the bridge letting go and this, this heavy distortion around the top. And uh, that's affecting its resonance in the lower frequencies as well. I've got to remember to take some photos too. Whenever I do videos, I'll forget to take photos. So I'll do that now. You know, I like to take a bit of tension off the strings before snipping them. It just feels really uh, 
really bad cutting strings under full tension. Plus I can go flying and take your freaking eye out. Normally got my string winder, but of course, as soon as I hit record, I forget all the critical tools that I need. Uh, so here I've got some uh, just hardened steel nippers. If you use your average cheapies, they're just, uh, I don't know, carbon steel, but not very hard. Maybe not even carbon steel, maybe even stainless or something like that. And they just, every time you cut a string, it just leaves a hole in the blade. So get yourself some uh, proper hardened ones. So they, they will quote the diameter of piano wire that they can cut. And typically piano wire is the same shit as guitar strings. It's close enough for us anyway. So um, get yourself a pair of them. This is this particular one's Draper 800. Just a cheapie, but does a job for rocking around in the garage. Now for getting these out, you always see like little lines on it from from people using uh, like pliers, serrated needle nose pliers or whatever. Uh, I like to get a business card. Of course, there's my stupid head. You just use the same pliers to get under them instead. You shouldn't need to really grip them. Uh, losing all the strings in there because I'm uh, worried more about video than catching them. It's all right, we know where they are. So I hope you enjoyed that footage of the back of my hand. So this is a bit of a weird one because the um, the wiring for the, the the output jack is taped to the back of the guitar. Generally, you try and uh, holy fuck the autofocus. Generally, you uh, try to tape it to, well, not the soundboard, but around the side of the guitar, the perimeter. I, I prefer to not have it on the soundboard, loading the soundboard down. It's pretty minimal difference, but it also uh, can rattle if it's touching the soundboard in some places without being properly secured. So I like to either run them in midair, like mate normally does, or tape them to the actual side of the guitar and run them around the perimeter of the guitar. Uh, so it's a bit weird that this is taped on the back. I think that might have been a later uh, later job by someone else. Right now we've got the two Allen keys to undo and uh, lower the, the pickup monstrosity. Uh, hopefully this glue, I'm worried about this glue, that it was an epoxy. Um, and maybe we won't be able to soften it with, with the average amount of heat. Because it looks a bit shiny. Uh, could have even been super glue, which will soften a bit, but will take a bit more heat than aliphatic or uh, high glue. But let's uh, see if we can undo those screws. Hopefully they're not glued uh, in the threads or anything like that. It's just the 2.5mm Allen key. Allen! Yeah, they're spinning. That's good. <laughs> could have been a bit of a showstopper if they glued the threads. Lower the pick up and sort of cup it, just cup it, cup the balls. And uh, there she is. So there's the individual crystal slugs and they've actually got like a deposited silver material either end. Very old school, it's like a Mad Max pickup. They're located by this rubber thing. It's got um, all the holes to keep the spacing right, so reassembly is a bit easier. And on the bottom you've got the bottom electrical contact, so they all need to sit level with the same amount of pressure on them all. Am I in focus? No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Sweet, whatever. Uh, so all the slugs have to sit with the same amount of pressure from the strings through the saddle, through the slugs onto that surface, and that's the actual hot signal taken from the bottom of the slugs. And then the uh, the ground comes from this thing. Carefully remove that, even though we'll probably replace it. Uh, there's a little strip that sits on top of the slugs, and that is grounded via screws to the little channel, bit of aluminium channel there, which looks like a high school metalwork project, but does the job. So a lot of people see those screws either side, and um, and they assume that's for action adjustment and they, they mess up their signal. Uh, I get quite a lot, a lot of people bringing in their maintenance and oh, the, the bass is weak or the treble is dead note, dead strings and it's because someone's played with these two screws. In fact, in the shop they often have a, a little gold and black sticker there saying do not adjust screws, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, so that is their system, and I'll show you under the bridge when we remove it uh, as to what compromises the, the top strength on these things. Q uh, clickbait thumbnail. This is what Meaton doesn't want you to know. Blah, blah, blah. Have me sitting there with my hands on my cheeks going, <gasps> you know, you know, the typical guitar influencer thumbnail. <laughs> if I ever do that, send me hate mail, all right? Well, I've just gone to remove the B string and it looks like it's glued in the slot. You can see there's a little bit of glue that's spilt when they've glued the nut in place. It also appears that they've got a bit around the first fret as well, unless that was uh, someone gluing the fret back down for some reason. Doesn't appear to be any uh, funkiness with the frets. They appear all good. So that's a win. So just a quickie today, uh, champions. Let's gauge the... Uh, guitar repair related content because as you know i'm mostly amps on this channel but it's it's literally uh, you know like probably 50 percent of the business is actually guitar repairs and maybe like one percent is retail <laughs> uh, i've got to get on top of that too marketing is not my strong point i'm not very good at selling myself anyway uh see you on the next one when we remove the bridge and get our hands dirty and get you know the high glue cooking and all the cool shit that everyone loves to see and all that stuff so don't forget to like and subscribe or uh, i'll send your mum a copy of your browser history